So when you're trying to say, well, is a distribution normal? Because if we're going to go into converting something into standard normal, we want to first make sure the distribution is approximately normal. So there are a variety of tools that are used. And generally, if you look at, we learned about skewness and kurtosis, zero is a symmetric distribution. It's not skewed at all. And we technically, most programs use what's called excess kurtosis. And with measures of excess kurtosis, um, which is like what Excel and JASP give you, uh, zero would be normal, right? Uh, as a general rule, plus or minus three for either of these is kind of a good heuristic for something being too far from normal for us to call it approximately normal right? So if we're within this plus or minus three range, we probably are okay to kind of squint and pretend that things are normally distributed. Now, we can also just do visual analysis. We can look at histograms and say, well, what is the shape approximately, right? Does it look something like a bell? These can sometimes be misleading, but they're a good general perspective. You can add what are called kernel density overlays to histograms. And we don't focus on that too much in the class. But it's just an option to kind of get a smoothing function. Because sometimes when you're looking at the bars on a histogram, it's hard to tell what the underlying distribution really looks like. And kernel densities kind of provide a smoothing function for that. Um, you can also do what's called a QQ plot. It's a quantile-quantile plot. And here it takes the expected normal value and plots it against the observed value. And essentially what happens here is you get a trend line of what you would expect for the matchup of your observed values and the expected normal values. And the line is what you would expect, and the dots here are what your data actually are. So the more closely these dots adhere to the line, the more normally distributed the data are. So this is a nice visual way to look at it. But I often say when it comes to looking at normality, again, we can have a little leniency in, in what we accept as being approximately normal because most of our tests are fairly robust. And we'll learn a little more about that and when we talk about the central limit theorem. But most of our tests are fairly robust to deviations from normality. So we don't need it to be exact, but we do want it to be close. Um, another thing is there's a series of tests you can run, like actual statistical tests to get a p-value and say, is it significantly non-normal, right? Um, the Komonograf-Smirnov test is an example. The Shapiro-Wilk test is an example. I tend to discourage the use of these tests, especially following them blindly. There's a variety of issues people have identified with them. I think it's really better to just know that you should look at your data, consider some of its you know, measures like skewness, kurtosis, maybe look at a QQ plot, a histogram, and just get a sense of whether or not it follows the expectations for approximately normal.